Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how we can deploy our Django and Vue app using Docker in DigitalOcean. I've got new videos coming every single Monday now, so if you're into Django, into Vue.js, and you want to learn how to build and deploy full SaaS applications uh, using the, that sort of tech stack, then subscribe and you'll get some good content over the next few weeks. So in the previous video we set up everything for local development, all we want to do this video is deploy everything using DigitalOcean. So I'm going to leave a link in the description and probably in the comments too. We're going to go ahead and create a droplet. Once we've created the droplet, I'm going to go Ubuntu. Uh, then I'm going to go regular SSD. And I'm going to go with the $24 per month plan because that gives us four gigabytes of RAM, um, which Docker wants. If you subscribe going forward, what I'm going to do is show you how to do this with uh, Docker Hub, in which case I think we'll be able to use a much cheaper um, plan so that's fine. I'm going to be using an SSH key that I've already created. If you want to know how to do that, I actually do that in this video. It's 15 minutes long, but if you click on here, so it's generating SSH key about a minute and a half in, uh, I show you how I generated that SSH key on Linux. Okay, so let's get back to this. So we're going to go ahead and create the droplet. So once that's been created, we're going to get our IP address. I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And for me, I've got a domain already pointed here, which I got from NameSilo, which I've always used. Um, so yeah, I'll leave a link in the description for that. And all you have to really do, like any domain, make sure you point it at DigitalOcean, and then you can manage the domain, and you can create some A records. So for me, I guess I created a www.questionly.app, api.questionly.app, and just questionly.app. And right now you can see there on an old IP address, and I'm just using this for testing. Um, although I did just accidentally copy that, so let's go ahead, go back, go back to our project, go to here, I'm going to edit this, edit the record, and I'm doing this now because it can take some time to actually update, so save that, edit record, save that, edit record, save that. Okay, so all of this is now pretty much ready to go. We still need to make some changes in our code. So we go to our terminal. So we're in our project directory. Bring this over here. So as before, this code will be available on GitHub. So really we want to go into, let's, let's just find our production.yaml. We just want to have this code. So this needs some changing. Um, again, this is from a previous project, so I'm going to be changing this to front end. This is going to be the same, I think, roughly to what we did in the local.yaml file in the previous video. A uh, container name front end, and this could just be, you know, my proj front end image, whatever you want to call it. Rather than API, this needs to depend on Django. And rather than questionly app, this is just front end. Lovely. So that's that done. Another thing we need to do is we need to go into the traffic file and we need to make changes here because right now we've only got one sort of, we're only dealing with our Django service and not our front end service. Again, I'm just going to copy and paste what I've done elsewhere and then we can sort, I can talk to you through it and again you should be able to look through the github to see this um, so what I've done is before we were just dealing with the front end we don't actually care about this static one so I can go ahead and just remove that API I'm gonna call this Django you probably do want to call it API or something and the service is Django there's no API service there is a front end service and we're using web secure in both cases and now it's really just saying well how do you want to access the back end how do you want to access the front end our django is going to be our back end so we want to access that through api.questionly.app or you know whatever my domain is and uh, our front end wants to be just accessed like this another thing to add is just down here like that i've got another load balancer for the front end and I believe that is it. So the last thing we want to do is replace everywhere else where we had 
um, example.com. And actually, whilst I'm here, if I've lost you already, my apologies. But the same video I showed you earlier uh, in the video, that's actually just set up using just an IP address. So if you don't have a domain name or anything like that, then that shows you how to, you can actually set this traffic file up um, with just a domain name. Um, so, uh, sorry, uh, just an IP address. So the next thing we really want to do is we want to search anywhere else where we might care about um, example, where we have example.com and I actually made an alteration. So actually we need to do um, dot Django production. So you need to, so I don't know why, sometimes it finds this, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, so if I just do example, for some reason it finds it. So here, this is our backend, right? So this is Django, so this is a loud host. So we just want API dot questionly dot app. And did I do dot app or did I do dot com? Yeah, good. I don't know how important this dot here is. I think that can be there or not there. Uh, and then going forward, you know, when you actually want to interact with each other, you have to go into Django core, course headers and stuff to also allow the front end um, things to make requests. But that's a separate video, which is why you should subscribe. So API question e. So I think that's it. So just before getting started with the next bit, I've gone on what's my DNS dot net. Uh, and I've done api.questionly.app and it actually shows me that it's already pointing at our new IP address. Um, so I think I'm confident to just go ahead and start doing the next bit. So the next thing we want to do is make sure that we can actually access our server. So we want to SSH into it with this command. So SSH dash I is just uh, saying which key we're going to use. Uh, I generated a key called DDD. Um, put these in your .ssh file. Again, hopefully you followed my other video uh, and at least just followed that for now. Root is the default user on DigitalOcean for Ubuntu. And then you just need to specify the IP address that was given to you um, by your DigitalOcean droplet. So let's try and do that. So it seems that we're in our server, so we can just exit now. That's fine, that's all I wanted to do. Uh, and the next thing we want to do, firstly actually, because I've tripped up here multiple times, make sure you've saved everything. So the next thing we want to do is basically copy all of our files over to our server. Now the first time I did this, uh, I used SCP, and then I actually learned that SCP is really, really slow, and I mean really slow, like this took more than, because I was curious in the end, this took like two, two and a half, three hours to complete with SCP, with rsync, oops, I've missed it, it will take you about a minute or two minutes, probably like two, three minutes actually. Um, so it's sort of the same, it's slightly different, so we've got rsync dash a dash uh, v dash e, and then we, this is how we specify our key, so just copy this all in, uh, and then again this is the file, and this rsync you have to be careful, so make sure you don't include the last slash, because that will just copy the contents and actually that just makes me realize that we need to go back one. So we can start by doing that. So once that's finished we should be able to just SSH into our server and see that our files are there, which they are. The next thing we want to do is install docker. Well I guess we can do a quick check properly. Looks like they're all dead there, so that's good. Now we want to let's clear this, go back to the top and install docker and copy this. I'm just using the official installation guide, um, so it's really simple to follow. So we can just go ahead and follow that. And in fact, I'm going to close this. We shouldn't need that anymore. Then we're going to do the update. Okay, paste that, that's fine. Okay, then we want to run this command. Uh, 
then we want to run this command. But yeah, going forward, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to use Docker Hub and then maybe use Rancho OS, which is another um, drop that you can create. And then hopefully we can create a cheaper one and then just pull the image from Docker Hub. But for now, this is the way I'm doing it. Yes. Okay. So now we can see that's just taken a moment. So this will okay, so at this point it's basically just saying like what what which ones we can install. It says it here. So to install a specific version of Docker Engine, list the available versions in the repo, then select and install. So, uh, and it says install a specific version by basically using the version string, which is uh, the second column here. I've already uh, done this over here. But it is just exactly that, and you'll be able to see that. So sudo apt install docker ce, and then it's just the, the top one up here. And you need to do that twice, essentially, as you can see. So you need to do it, replace it with version string there, and replace the version string there, and then you should be able to install it, and then you should be done. And we can even see that it's worked by running this command. There you go. Everything has, is working successfully. Brilliant. So all we now need to do is go into our project and we need to build. So I've got this command somewhere over here. See, I usually, I'd usually run this command, which is just um, with production, of course. I guess we can do that. So essentially what we're doing is we're choosing a file. We're using production.yaml. Uh, we want it to be up and then we, we want to build before we do that and then we want it to be detached uh, we, c we can run this and see what happens So supposedly everything has been set up correctly. So I guess we can run docker container LSA Let's make that a bit smaller so I can just see Created up 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 exited something exited. Oh, that's hello world. We don't care about that um, Great Let's make this uh, bigger again, I guess, so people can see what's... Okay, hopefully that's okay. Um, there's one thing I wanted to check, one more thing, which is just the logs, because something I care about is has traffic. Oops. Yeah, there shouldn't be a space there in Docker Compose. There should be a space there. So the main thing I really care about here is traffic, 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 traffic. So it doesn't look like there's any errors in traffic. So that makes me think that everything is working. So exciting. So I guess we probably want to use, so questionly.app, there's our front end, lovely, HTTPS, and hopefully API app gives us our back end. Wonderful. So everything has worked um, as intended, which is lovely. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them or join the Discord or whatever. Um, these videos take quite a while to make, so if you want to support me on Patreon, that'd be great. If not, that's also cool. But just leave a comment or a like if it was useful. Um, yeah, so that's it really. And again, subscribe, and we'll be going over sort of like my whole goal really is to sort of streamline making like full web applications for people. So in the next few videos, I think there's going to be more focus on actually like once we've got to this bit, how can we make everything talk with each other? Then how can we make, uh, you know, Django REST framework work nicely? How can we make our front end look nice? And then we can talk over some projects too. 
But yeah, that's going to be it for this video. It's kind of cool that this works. Um, and again, check out my other video if you don't have a domain name yet and you just want like to do it with an IP address over HTTP. But yeah, that's it. Thank you. Take care.